Hey team, this is Luca Crusader Machining. Welcome back for another fantastic video. Have you ever heard the buzz term in our industry, Swiss machine? Oh, I know Swiss machine this, Swiss machine that. But you're not exactly sure what a Swiss machine really means. In this video, we're gonna dive into it. What is a Swiss machine and some differences between a Swiss versus a conventional lathe? So let's dive right in all right team and for everyone that's asking chauncey is on what we would call a temporary involuntary vacation on a swiss machine similar to what we see right here what i like to call it is a sliding headstock then the technical term in our industry what you would call it is a sliding headstock Swiss machine, I think that term came around because the Swiss were some of the first that did it, if I remember correctly. My grandfather worked on some years ago, I think they were Swiss, called Escomatic. If any uh, old timers out there happen to see this video and can chime in on what that means, leave a comment below. Where did the origin of that term come from? I guess I may have prepared better for the video, but either way, my grandfather ran some Escomatics back in the 70s and I think he said that they were Swiss, but we're gonna talk about more modern equipment. So a Swiss machine we call sliding headstock, as opposed to a, what I would call a conventional, more popular CNC lathe that we all know, it's a fixed headstock. The headstock is the portion of the machine that holds your spindle. So on a, if you were looking at a manual lathe as you're standing in front of one, where your spindle is that kind of like the housing, that's called your headstock. What makes a Swiss machine a Swiss machine is that headstock slides. We're on a conventional lathe that's stationary and the tools move. But we're going to dive further and actually look into the machine itself and I'll show you what I mean. So on our Swiss machine, some of the parts we've made that we could only make on a Swiss are parts like this. Long, thin parts, and that's not only what a Swiss can do, but they're very good at it long thin parts and we make that in one op one pass over that part and then we transfer and do that on the sub transfer is when a sub spindle come and grabs a part from the main parts like this we make these on our sliding headstock machines and a swiss is perfect for parts like that because we use what we call a guide bushing and a guide bushing remains stationary whereas the headstock moves back and forth. I'm going to show you that right now. So I've had 14 cups of coffee today, so I'm hoping the camera isn't too shaky. But right here, this part, this is our guide bushing. This remains stationary. You take that guide bushing housing out, put in a different size, and the guide bushing has to be very precise to the size of your material. Whereas a three-jaw chuck or a collet pad or collet pads or a collet have a little bit more room for, um, I guess, tolerance, plus or minus on sizes, a guide bushing has to be pretty precise and so does the material. A lot of people grind their stock for Swiss. We don't always, it depends on the tolerance you have to hold. So you can see here, I'm going to show you, you see that material going in and out. That material is going in and out, the guide bushing is stationary. This here is what I was saying before. This is our headstock. Let me try to find them. See how the headstock moves out? So the headstock moves, that holds the material. There's a collet in there. It's hard to see, but that's the spindle nose. That's holding the collet. So we got our 12 foot long bar feed. We're running a huge order here. I think like 300,000 parts or 245,000. 12 foot long bar goes through, headstock slides with a collet holds the material. And the material comes out on this side that we machine. Oop, over travel, that's fine. So on our machine, what makes these so rigid is that our turning tools are right by the material. That's why on a part like this, we can machine it in one go because this feeds out 
of the guide bushing while our turn, our tool stays stationary. Now there are some Swiss that have turrets. There are some Swiss that these tools can move in and out, but ours don't. I've never been on a Swiss that's been able to do that. This part right here, I call the hook arm. Move our coolant. This is holding all of our ID tools. And that is one limitation of the Swiss, especially the ones we have. You can't really do deep hole drilling on the main side because of that shorter length that we hold here. But what we lack in the ability to do on deep hole drilling on the main, we compensate by drilling half and half is what I call it. We'll get it like this part. We would drill halfway through and on the sub over here, I'd put a drill and drill the other half through. And as long as your drills, your run out's good on your part, your drills are nice and concentric to your workpiece, and you won't leave a step over in the middle. I'm gonna jog this up right here and show you what I mean by our workpiece. So, take a look here at our turning tool, how close that is to our guide bushing. You're able to maintain maximum rigidity because your part's not sticking out three or four inches long. Your tool is about 100 to 150 thousandths away from what we call our guide bushing. I'm gonna take a cut real quick and show you. So I cannot, I do not, I am unable to and I do not want to run this program dry with the door open because of my parameters are going crazy. But I wanna show you, see I got my tool in position and see how close it is to the guide bushing and watch the material come out. And I've done a part on these up, I think the longest one I've ever done was 16 inches. And even what I'm turning right here, see if we get this sucker to run real quick. Save cutoff position. Show a quick little example. Spot, our drill. There we go. That's a Swiss machine in action. So that right there that you just saw that video, that was a Swiss machine in action. And although that cycle's pretty fast, we've had some of them like this part. I think this takes around six or seven minutes and we're able to mill. Though This is how it comes off right off the machine. After we make this, we are ready to ship, turn. And on a Swiss, I'm able to take some very aggressive feeds and speeds on this job here. It's 416 stainless annealed, which isn't really difficult to machine at all, but I'm able to take around 200,000 step to cut. I come in here with a D, profile all this, do one rough, but I do it in steps. So I got a rough and then a finish. It's so one limitation to the Swiss is the guide bushing length. The, abil the ability to go back and forth into the guide bushing to do like rough, rough, rough finishes is limited on the length of the guide bushing land, which I believe is 0.7 standard, but you can get extended length guide bushing, which is about 1.6. But parts like this doing in one shot, you would have a very, very difficult time. In fact, I might even say it would be impossible to do without a live center. There's no spot, no area to put a live center, to put a center in here to support it. So that Swiss maintaining that depth of cut right there, or I'm sorry, maintaining that rigidity while you're taking that depth of cut, that's where the Swiss machines shine. Or, as we say in the industry, sliding headstock. As you can see, the material, the guide bushing is stationary, the material goes in and out, and the tools only move up in Y and X. They don't move anywhere in Z, maintaining rigidity. So right there was a little crash course in the Swiss machines, and I've never covered them a lot in my videos. I, but unbeknownst to a lot of people, I have worked on Swiss machines for about 10 years, programming, operation, setup, training other people to do it, so on and so forth. We have a few of them here. 32 millimeter is the highest capacity we have, but I have been on some 20s, and at a, years ago I was helping out a shop that had a 12, 12 millimeter. 
So I have been on Swiss for a while. I just don't really cover a lot of the content. You can't really get good videos from it the way that I see that you can get on a fixed head stock machine. But anyone out there that's watching this, you got experience with Swiss, what do you think? Love them, hate them, neutral. I think they're great machines. Certain parts we run here, we could not run them without a Swiss. You know, for example, the same thing I showed at the beginning. Good luck making that one without one. No spot, no center, one cut, boom. And I think we make this in about 25, maybe 40 seconds at most. And it's done and complete. Holding really tight tolerance, I think plus or minus five tenths, point zero 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 five. This is Luke with Crusader Machining signing out. What do you think below? Or leave your comment below. What do you think? What do you think of the video? Like, subscribe, share. Also, on the, one of the last videos I talked about, I do have a free ebook, not talking about Swiss. Maybe I'll make one in the future. But the one that, that free ebook, you can check out my Instagram, it's linked to the bio. Same with TikTok, or you can find that ebook video. I talked briefly about it, and there's a link to it. Completely free, no upsell, nothing like that. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.